morning and welcome to Calendar Bay Church Online. I'm Pastor John Intoff and uh, thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule to uh, come and to worship together, to be able to hear a message from God's Word. And uh, we pray that God would bless you and meet you uh, wherever you're, you are right now. Um, we are still in the midst of COVID-19 and uh, a number of things happening in Ontario this week and particularly in our area as the Ontario government saying that we're moving into a, a stage three of reopening Ontario and all the things that are involved with that. Uh, not a lot of that affects particularly the church. The thing that is probably going to affect the most is uh, the Nipissing Perry Sound Health Unit. Uh, requiring masks is going to be a part of our everyday activity, and that is going to affect us uh, here at Calendar Bay Church. And so we are meeting together as a board uh, to kind of discuss the reopening of Calendar Bay Church and when that's going to take place. I can tell you uh, pretty confidently that it will not be over the next three weeks as I'm going to be away on holidays. And uh, so it's probably simpler for that time frame uh, just to kind of keep the online service. And j while I'm away, I am really pleased. Uh, Glenn Macbeth is going to be leading us. And also um, we have Andy Stanley, a video series by Andy Stanley that we're going to be enjoying together uh, in our online service. And so that's really exciting. And uh, we'll be giving you more updates. Watch the Daily Encouragement and also watch Facebook uh, for any updates that we might have in regards to COVID-19. Um, High Power Soccer is going to be going August 17 to 21. Uh, one change that looks like it's going to be happening is uh, instead of having it at the community center, we're planning on having it here at the church. Uh, the, the main reason is, is because the community center is run through a number of government levels, uh, there's a higher potential of cancellation if we hold it there, whereas is if we have it at the church, we have a little bit more control over some of those things. So it means we're going to have to adjust and change some things. Uh, but if you are interested in being a part of uh, High Power Soccer, you can speak to Wilma or you can speak to Patricia, and they'll give you some information on how you can volunteer uh, at High Power Soccer. Uh, we're still holding our prayer meeting during the summer. It's on Monday nights at 7 o'clock. And uh, as I'm away for the next number of weeks, Patricia Atwood is going to be in charge of that. And so if you're interested in attending that, uh, you need to let her know in advance. Uh, so that's just a part of the restrictions we're under. And so we need to know in advance how many people are going to be here and so we can have documentation. So if you are interested in attending our prayer meeting, uh, please let Patricia know and she'll get you your name on the list and then it's all good. So that is Monday night at seven o'clock here at Calendar Bay Church. Uh, thank you so much for your generosity in supporting uh, the ministry of Calendar Bay Church. Uh, you have been extremely generous and we have been very blessed uh, by everyone's faithful giving. And so if you would like to contribute to the ministry of Calendar Bay Church, there's two ways that you can do that. The first one is by going online to our webpage, which is calendarbaychurch.ca. And when you go there, you just go to the About tab, and you click on that, and it will have ways that you can give, and you can get that all set up so that you can safely and securely give to the ministry of Calendar Bay Church online. The other way is through mail, and you can do that uh, by mailing it to the to the church, which is Box 218, 888 Calendar Bay Drive, uh, Calendar Ontario P0H1H0. That's Box 218, 888 Calendar Bay Drive, Calendar Ontario P0H1H0. And uh, again, thank you so much for your generous support of Calendar Bay Church. We've been using a number of methods to stay contact, uh, connected with people. And two of those ways are our Facebook group, which we encourage everybody who's on Facebook to come to the group and, and we can share and encourage one another there. Uh, the other way is through our daily email, which is called the Daily Encouragement. And Manik is going to be making sure that that is still going out as I'm going to be away for the next number of weeks. 
And uh, so if you have any information that you would like to get into the daily encouragement, uh, please speak to Manik. And also, um, if you would like to get on that mailing list, just email info at calendarbaychurch.ca and we'll get you on that mailing list. Uh, if prayer requests. If you have prayer requests that you would like to send out, all you have to do is email those to prayerchain at calendarbaychurch.ca and then we will uh, safely and securely pray for your specific needs. And so... Uh, uh, it's a great resource that you can access in order to be able to get prayer support uh, during this time. Lots of online church resources are available on our webpage. You can get caught up on messages that you missed, and you can also read some of the other resources. Uh, a couple resources that we have had recently, uh, the Discovery Bible Lesson for Kids, and also the... Uh, small group curriculum are taking a little bit of a break right now. They'll be returning soon, uh, but just for the next number of weeks, those resources will not be available, but will be returning soon. Well, we want to worship the Lord together, and Psalm 40 says this, He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my step secure, and he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. And so we want to sing a song of praise to our God. And let's sing together, What a Beautiful Name. Thank you. 
What a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. And it's so great that we're able to lift up his name together. The Bible says that when his name is lifted up, he draws people to himself. And that's our prayer is that uh, today Jesus would draw you closer to himself. Well, we're continuing a series of messages looking at helping you navigate life. You know, there are lots of things that are going on right now which are making the world very complicated. And, and this is a trend that I've noticed uh, since I began in ministry uh, 30 years ago until today, that things are not as simple as they used to be. You know, often we pine for the good old simple days. And I, I have to admit, I do that a little bit because life does seem to be getting more complicated and moving at a very fast speed. And some of the issues that we're wrestling with are really complicated. And so uh, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at living in a cancel culture and how that affects us uh, on our spiritual journey. Uh, last week, or two weeks ago, we looked at uh, living in offended culture, hashtag offended, and all the different ways that we have to manage offense in our society. And then last week, we looked at a very uh, significant issue of what it means to live in a post-truth culture, and how do we navigate that. And, you know, we believe that the Bible teaches as principles for us to help live on this planet. And so sometimes the Bible speaks very clearly and plainly on certain topics, and then there's other topics where we need to interpret and find principles in order to be able to live. And so today we want to look at some principles in order to be able to help us in uh, some significant areas in our culture. You know, I've often thought about... <laughs> Uh, when I was in Bible college and the things that I learned because, you know, Bible college was to prepare you for ministry and I've often re reflected and thought about what are the things that in Bible college that I, I, I didn't learn that probably would have been important to really get a hold of. And uh, one of the things was this, uh, a course on navigating church politics and finances because, you know, you're, you're coming into ministry and you really want to see the world change but there's this other part of navigating how you work with church boards and and budgets and all those type of things. And I never really felt that there was some adequate training in that. The changing technological culture. You know, when I would back in the day, we had an overhead projector, uh, flannel graphs, you know, things were a lot simpler. And now uh, with the internet and video and computers, it, it really has changed the landscape of ministry, and it's very different. And so, really, there was nothing when I was in Bible college that uh, there was no, you know, media and tech and ministry courses, nothing like that. Um, also, the whole idea of balancing life, ministry, marriage, family, everything else. And probably you don't feel like you've been adequately trained either on how to do that. How do we uh, balance all these different areas? And, I, and, you know, as I reflect on my time in Bible college, I don't know if I ever really felt I got adequate training on how to do this grand balancing act. And, uh, and so that would be another one. And the last one that I really have thought about is navigating mental health issues. Uh, I find mental health issues is one of the most complicated ministry concepts and how that all unfolds. And so that's what we want to talk a little bit about today is navigating mental health issues and the church because it is a, uh, it's considered to be one of the greatest problems or difficulties in our modern society. And so uh, we want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, just recently, this is a, a, an article that I found on the CTV News website. And uh, there was a Sudbury man found dead in North Bay Creek. It was the third body found this week. Three bodies found in the North Bay area. And basically, it doesn't tell you directly but when on the news site it says no foul play, um, usually that means that they, they took their own life. And all three of these cases were cases where individuals took their own life. 
and it just shows how much this infects our society and, not, and it's not just um, out there somewhere uh, it's also affecting the church um, on the screen here uh, you'll see the name of four gentlemen on Andrew Stockland Jared Wilson Darren Patrick Isaac Hunter all of them served as pastors in uh, in major churches in the United States and they also took their own lives and so we can see that and most of these guys uh, were very open about their struggles with depression and mental health. And yet, they still ended up taking their own lives. And so this is something that is a very big, big issue. Now, so I started to go through, and I wanted to find some stats for Canada. And so I found some Canadian mental health statistics. This is from the Mood Disorders Society of Canada. And this is there, and these are Canadian stats, very recent, I think as close as 2018, in regards to mental health. And this is so mental health in Canada. Chances of having a mental health in your lifetime uh, mental illness in your lifetime in Canada is one in five. The chances of having a mental illness or a substance use disorder in your lifetime in Canada is one in three. So that's 33%. So on any given Sunday, 33% of people will have either had a substance abuse issue or mental illness. At any given time, the percentage of Canadians who have a mental illness is 10.4%. So that is 10%, over 10% of the population. Uh, the percentage of adolescents age 15 to 24 who report a mental illness or substance abuse almost doubles to 18%. The stats continue on. The percentage of people who die by suicide and who have a diagnosable mental illness. Now this is Canada we're talking about. 90%. 90% had some underlying mental health issue. Uh, chances of experience or having a mental illness by the time you reach the age of 40. Now listen to this stat. This is crazy. One in two. 50%. By the time you're 40 years old, it will be a 50% chance that, that uh, you will have had some bout with mental illness. The number of people in Canada who die by suicide per year, 4,000 or almost 11 people per day commit suicide. The percentage of people experiencing a major depression who do not receive adequate care, 50%. So those that are going through some kind of episode, 50% of them don't feel that they received adequate care. Uh, it goes on and it says this, the percentage of Canadians who in the last 12 month period had consulted a family physician for their mental health, almost 60%, came in at 57%. So almost 60% of our society went to the doctor with mental health issues. Uh, the unemployment rate for people with severe mental illnesses, 70 to 90% of people who are suffering from mental illness are not able to work. Uh, the number of Canadians 15 years or older who in the past 12 month period reported symptoms consistent with either a major depressive episode, bipolar disorder, a generalized anxiety disorder, or alcohol and drug uh, abuse, 2.8 million people. That's a lot of people. And mental health issues is something that in my household is, is not been, uh, you know, out there somewhere else in my own home uh, or in extended family. Uh, we have something that uh, my sister has something called 22Q deletion syndrome or DeGeorge syndrome, which shows itself as mental health issues and bipolar issues. Uh, we, in our household, we've had a fetal alcohol syndrome, which is a, an acquired brain injury where your brain is damaged because of, of prenatal um, alcohol consumption and so it has mental health issues that accompany that um, our household has been affected by addictions on a, on a number of levels um, 
epilepsy, which is not a mental illness itself, but can have mental health repercussions, uh, general anxiety disorders, and, and depression. And these are all things that have been in our, my own family and extended family. Um, since I've been in ministry in the church, uh, some of the issues that I've confronted as a, as a pastor, um, I've, I've ha had to handle or, or help out with post-concussion syndrome, acquired brain injuries from car accidents, uh, bipolar issues, uh, schizophrenia, eating disorders, phobias, suicide. Um, all these different issues have come and are affecting ministry in the church. And so the question we have to ask ourselves then is this, how do we navigate faith in a mental health crisis? Sometimes the church has been very guilty, and not just the church, general society has not had an easy time in handling and managing mental health issues. And so we as a church don't want to put our heads in the sand and not acknowledge the fact that these issues are surrounding us. And so we have to ask ourselves the question, how do we navigate faith in the midst of a mental health crisis? Well, Jesus talked about um, kind of his mission here on earth. And this is what it says in Luke 4, 18 to 19. Jesus is in the synagogue and he, and he brings this message out from Isaiah. He's actually quoting the book of Isaiah and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so as Jesus talks about his mission, he says that his message is to bring good news to people, to bring a message of hope to people, that he's to minister to the poor, that he's to bring freedom to prisoners, he's to bring to recovery to the blind, the oppressed set free, and declare that it is the year of the Lord's favor. And as we look at that passage of Scripture, there's kind of two interpretations that you can look at that. One is that it is a more spiritual meeting, which is often the one that we take on. You know, that when we're talking about Jesus um, setting the prisoners free, that we're really all prisoners to sin and that we all need to be set free from our sin. That, you know, we were blinded in our sins and that he's going to bring recovery for that. That we have been oppressed by our sins and he's going to set us free from that. And that the ultimate setting a uh, year of the Lord's favor is, is that we can be brought into a right relationship with God through the forgiveness of our sins. And so there's that whole aspect that it can all be interpreted through that lens. But there's another more literal that when Jesus came that he actually did want to bring freedom to prisoners. Now, in, in not in the sense of, of um, freedom for prisoners who are actually in jail, but those that are prisoners to addiction, prisoners to um, other uh, mental issues, that Jesus wants to set those people free, that there is a blindness that can happen uh, a blindness of addiction, a blindness uh, that, that ne needs to be overcome, and that Jesus is going to do that, that he's going to set those that are uh, enslaved to different things and set them free. And so that it's not just a spiritual concept, that this is an actual literal concept that he is going to go in and do these things. And, and Scripture tells us that we as believers need to be on this kind of mission of care. That there are needs in our society that we as those who follow Christ are to uh, live out this mission. And so this is what the Bible says in Philippians 2.4. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interest of others. So that we're not just to look after our own needs, that we are to look for needs that are around us. And then it goes on and says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's Galatians 6.2. 
that what Jesus is saying to us is, is that we not only need to, uh, to, to fulfill the law of Christ, which is to love God and to love people, we need to carry each other's burdens. Uh, and then it goes on and it says this in Romans 15, 1. We who are strong and have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. And so Paul is telling us that we're not just to take care of ourselves, but those of us who are uh, stronger and able to help people, that we have an obligation in order to be able to do that. And this is what Paul again says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build Build one another up, and he tells them, just as you're doing, keep doing that. And so Jesus wants us to continue his mission of helping the oppressed, helping the poor, helping those that are in need. And that way we fulfill the law of Christ, of what he was trying to accomplish by doing that. And so we want to make sure, particularly when we're dealing with mental health crisis in our society that we're not just uh, blind being blind to all that is going on around us and so we need to be on this mission of care and so i want to pull out some different principles uh, from god's word and the first one is is that when it comes to mental health issues we need to have a holistic view not a simplistic view and what do I mean by that? Well, when it comes to physical health, we usually come at it from a, a holistic approach. And let me explain. If I am sick, or if I've been to the doctor with a serious health issue, well, number one, I'm going to pray. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get other people to pray. You know, that if I have a major health issue going on in my life, or maybe not even a major health issue, just a health issue, and it's concerning to me, I am going to get other people to pray about that. And so there you go, I'm going to pray. Uh, then I'm going to seek help. I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to find somebody who's able to help me with this problem. Uh, then I am going to do everything medically possible in order to be able to deal with that. So if the doctor says I need to have surgery, well, probably I am going to have surgery. If the doctor says I need to do this, then I'm going to do that. You know, that's, that's what I want to do is I want to be healthy. So I'm going to listen to what the doctor says. And so that means may, I'm going to do everything medically possible. And if the doctor says I need to take medicine in order to be able to, to help me with my, my physical need, then I'm going to take the medicine that the doctor recommends. And if I have surgery or whatever, that I'm also going to have supporting care. I'm going to go to a physio. I'm going to go to the chiropractor. I'm going to go to all these different supporting organizations who are going to help me to get back to full health. And so that is a holistic view as far as our physical health. And most of the time, we know that when we have a physical issue, we are going to do all these different things because the ultimate goal is, is that we're going to feel better. And sometimes, though, people with mental health issues are just told, well, you just need to pray harder and you need to trust God more. And that is a very simplistic view. And stats actually show that a large portion of people in the church, when it comes to mental health issues, 50% of people, which I find is funny. Okay, so it says 50% of people are going to have a mental issue. And the other 50 are, are uh, going to be saying, you just need to pray harder and you need to trust God more. And so this is where the, the issue happens is, is that when it comes to our physical health, we're willing to do all sorts of different things. But when it comes to our mental health, we just say, pray harder and trust more. And we need to treat it like other health issues. That, yeah, we need to pray. Of course, all of us need to pray more. And, uh, but... We need to pray, but we also need to seek help. We need to do everything medically possible. Uh, we take medicine if we need to. We get all the extra support and care in order to be able to bring us to a point where we are either uh, going to get better or we're going to be able to manage better. 
And so that's what a holistic approach. And so people need to realize that mental health issues are complicated and that they are need to be given a holistic approach. The second thing is, is that we also need to be a part of the solution. We need to be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. And sometimes when we take on a simplistic approach, we become a part of the problem, not a part of the solution. So how do we be a part of the, the solution? Number one, we need to remove the stigma. Oftentimes there's a stigma that's attached to mental health issues, and so people don't want to talk about it because they're afraid of, you know, being labeled or... or um, or just, you know, that people are going to talk about them. And so we need to make sure that we remove the stigma from the fact that people are wrestling. Because stats show that between at any given point, there's going to be 33% of our congregation that is wrestling with these issues. And so we need to bring it into the light and we need to, need to make it a common part of our discussions and remove the stigma that's involved. Yeah, you know what? Uh, at different points, we all wrestle and we struggle with things and we need to be open and talk about that because we want to remove the stigma that is attached to it. Uh, number two, we need to make sure that we're available to help people. That, you know, when... If somebody is bringing their concerns to you about mental health issues, don't just shut them down and marginalize them. Make yourself available to be a help in the midst of it. Uh, don't, you know, sometimes when people are going through mental health issues, they, they want to talk about it. And if you're being kind of a, a door that's closed there, you're not really helping, number one, to remove the stigma uh, you're, you're just building it up even more. And so you need to make sure that you are available to listen. And, that, and that's the next part is you need to be a listening ear for people. That people want to talk about it and they need to make sure that we can bring it into the light. And so be a listening ear. And then be honest with your own struggles. I've tried to be as honest as I can at different points. I've, I've, I've called it teetered on the edge of, of depression and, uh, and some of the other struggles that I've gone through of, of also being uh, involved with mental health issues as a, as a care person, all the different struggles that go along with mental health issues. Let's be honest about those things that, you know, boy, that was hard or, or here's something I learned, you know, th all these different things that we need to do because we need to be honest with one another because if we're not honest then we build the stigma and so let's make sure that we're being honest with the things that we're going through um, and help navigate solutions this is uh, some of the things um, when you're dealing with uh, mental health issues sometimes the system can be a little bit complicated and so 50% um, of people say they don't have access to proper help. So 50% of people who are wrestling with mental health issues are not finding the help. Because sometimes when you're in a bad mental frame of mind, it is very difficult to help find the resources that will help you. And so we need to make sure that we are helping people uh, to have access and and some of that is is financial because support costs money uh, some people you know they're going through things and um, and counseling costs money and some of these other resources that are available out there they could have a cost that's attached to them some things are free some are not but sometimes it's it's difficult in order to be able to find them and so um uh, we need to make sure that we're, we're really trying to help people to be able to access these different things. And one of the other things that can help with that is, is uh, often it requires paperwork. And uh, sometimes when you're dealing with people who have mental health issues, I, I remember listening to uh, uh, Nicole from Hope Awaits 
when she came to the church. And she said that one of the first things that they have to do is uh, rebuild their, um, their life, and particularly when it comes to paperwork that they have lost their identity. They rebuild their identity because they've lost their health card, they've lost their birth certificate, they've lost their SIN number, they've lost, and all of these things, in order to get them back, again, number one, it's probably gonna cost something. Number two, it's going to require paperwork. And, um, and I've had to help people do paperwork because sometimes, if you've done government paperwork before, not the simplest process in the world. And so we need to make sure that we're coming alongside and helping because it requires pap paperwork. And be helpful motivation as well because if you're in a depressed state of mind, one of the things that you lack the most is motivation to do anything like um, getting out of bed or, or anything is harder to do. And so if... Uh, you know somebody, you know, they have an appointment or something like that. Be helpful motivation. Say, hey, do you want me to come with you? I can drive or, or I'll pick you up at this point. Something like that to be helpful motivation. You don't want to be overwhelming, but you want to make sure that you are a, being a help in order to, to encourage them to access the resources that are available. Another principle is, is to don't go alone. Um, one of the things that the stats showed very clear to me as I was looking at it is the fact that you are not alone as you're going through. There are lots of people going the same path. And so you are not alone. You are not the only person to ever have these kind of issues, particularly in the church. You are not the only person in the church that is wrestling with some of these issues. There are lots of people that are, are, uh, have gone through the same thing and are able to be a help. The other thing that you need to be reminded of is, is that you are not alone in the sense that God is always with you as you wrestle and you go through this. There has never been a moment when God is not with you. Never, ever been a moment. Find some replenishing people. If you're wrestling with mental health issues, find some people who are able to be a support. Some people, you know what? Um, there's, a, there's another side to this. There's people that um, I remember uh, Gordon McDonald called them VDPs, very draining people. And when you're going through mental health issues, having VDPs just creates more issues. But to find a VRP, which is a very replenishing person, is a good thing. And so be looking for those people who can be an extra support and a help for you. Find some of those people that can be VRPs. And, and we in the church, let's try to be VRPs. Be those replenishing and helpful people. Um, don't self-medicate. This is a really important principle. Um, many people, when they're going through problems and difficulties, uh, will, will um, self-medicate. Self-medication often is alcohol, uh, drugs, um, pornography. Um, you, you, people will also, um, you know, uh, therapy, uh, what do you call it? Consumer therapy, going out shopping. And so sometimes people can get themselves in incredible financial difficulty because of trying to make themselves feel better. And some people, the ultimate uh, bad self-medication is, 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 is that people kill themselves because they just want to feel better. And so it's a last ditch effort in order to be able to do that. Please don't self-medicate. Actually, I was looking at smoking stats, um, not stacks, stats, statistics on smoking. And um, so many people die from smoking every year. It's actually quite a staggering number. And, and a lot of smoking is, again, dealing with the stress and difficulty in your life. And eventually, it, it will kill you. And so don't self-medicate 
trying to cope on this because those things will just cause greater problems in the long run. Uh, and remember that you you are not a uh, a victim. Uh, sometimes we can take on what's known as a victim mentality. You know, we, we all wrestle with these things. And so sometimes we get this, well, why did this happen to me? Why am I going through this? And, and uh, those are hard questions. And but the problem is, is that, that the end result of it, it ends up that we make ourselves into a victim. And if we make ourselves into a victim, uh, then uh, we just feel sorry for ourselves and, and we don't seek out the help that we need. Um, Ask God to help you do your part. You know, as we wrestle with uh, issues, sometimes it's hard to do the things that we're supposed to do. And, and ask God to give you the help, the help you need to be able to do your part. You know, sometimes we find some of the uh, best ideas from the craziest places. Um, I always consider Jim Carrey to be a, just a bit of a goof. Um, you know that he uh, is an actor. He's done a lot of goofy movies. My wife doesn't even like watching his movies because she thinks he's just too goofy. And, and I found this incredible quote from Jim Carrey in regards to mental health. And this is what he said. He says, I believe depression is legitimate. But I also believe that if you don't exercise, eat nutritious food, get sunlight, get enough sleep, consume, consume positive material, surround yourself with support, then you aren't giving yourself a fighting chance. And I thought, wow, Jim Carrey, that's quite profound. You know, we need to ask God to help us to do the right things because some of our issues are ones that can be managed if we do the right things in our life, which is one of the hardest things to do. And so he says, you know, this is legitimate. It's what you're going through is, is a legitimate thing. But let's ask God to give us the help that we need in order to be able to do the right things. So what do we do? Very quickly, three things that I think. Number one is we need to be aware of the fact that this is a big, big problem around us. And in our awareness, we need to reduce the stigma that's attached to it. And we need to be doing everything we possibly can to make the church a safe place in order to be able to help people wrestle with, with these things and to help them to be able to navigate life. Isn't that what the church is supposed to be all about? Helping the oppressed, helping those who are struggling and wrestling? That's what we need to be doing as a church to help people navigate life particularly. And so we need to be aware and we need to be a part of the solution. The church is to be the place that where you can find hope, you can find peace, you can find strength and God will help you in order to be able. Can we guarantee that God's going to miraculously take it away? No, we can't. But we can guarantee you that you will find a place where you'll f discover that God never leaves you and forsakes, forsakes you and that he's going to help you in order to be able to help um, navigate life. And the last one is, is we need to hold on to hope. Even when we are struggling with stuff, Jesus gave, died so that we could have hope. And this hope, the Bible describes it, it says it's like an anchor. We have this hope as an anchor that we can hold on to. And when we hold on to that anchor, we have this incredible hope. And you know what? That's what we need to hold on to as a church, that we have a message of hope. And even in the midst of a crazy world that is going in all sorts of crazy directions, we can grasp and hold on to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And we can hold on to that hope. And each morning when I get up, the mercies of God are going to be new every morning. And I can have hope that I can make it through this day by the power and grace of Jesus Christ. Just want to close with this quote. Some will have you believe that hope is a dangerous kind of currency, but I disagree. To me, hope is a beacon of light that helps us sail the waves of life. Mental health issues are all around us. 
But with Jesus Christ, we have hope and we can navigate and sail these waves of life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in you we have hope and that we can hold on to that hope and that, Father, you give us strength for each day that the mercies of God are new every morning and that we can lean and depend on you and not on our own strength and that even in the midst of these uh, living in a mental health crisis, that, Father, you give us daily strength that you give us daily peace, that you renew us each and every day. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to sing. And I love the, uh, this song. It's, it talks about building our lives and what we do we build our lives on. And, and let's build our lives on Jesus. And he gives us hope. And he also gives us hope so that we can help other people. Let's sing it together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you.
sun beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those around me I hope and pray that we're able to build our lives on Jesus Christ. It's wonderful to know that the grace of God is new every morning and He can give us daily strength, whatever we are going through. God's desire is that He's going to help us navigate life. And some of these things that are hard and difficult, He allows us to go through these things so that we grow in more into His image and depend more on Him each and every day. Well, God bless you as you go through your week. I pray that you uh, find some replenishing people in your life to be able to help support you on this spiritual journey. And let's make the church a place that is a part of the solution when it comes to navigating mental health in our country. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you in a few weeks as I get back from holidays.